It's Create Day. So let's get started on this bowl full of love. I cut out a heart template from just a piece of paper and then I have this uh, really light pink, very light pink fabric that I am just going to trace the half heart around so that I can cut out the hearts for my little mini pillows. I made a total of three pillows so I ended up cutting out six of the hearts. I want to use this lace on the front of the heart, so I just laid it out to where I thought it would look good on top of that, and then I pinned it in place so that I could cut it out. I turned it over to cut it out. It was just easier to see where I was cutting if I was doing it from the back side around the pink fabric instead of cutting around on the front of the lace. I'm going to apply this lace to the front of the fabric with some of my Turbo Tacky Glue. I didn't want to use hot glue uh, because it's lace and it would just show through too much so I just Brush this on mostly around the edges and then in the areas that the lace is a little bit thicker um, to try to get it to attach without it showing through too much. So now I pin the front and back sections of the heart together just in the middle section so that I could go around the outside edges with my hot glue gun to glue the two pieces together and I'm going to leave a little opening so that I can uh, put the stuffing in. Now you could also glue these together right sides together and then turn them right side out uh, but I just prefer to do the raw edge around these because these are just kind of a shabby chic more rustic looking pillow. And so now I just have some polyfill from a old stuffed animal and you can use um, like the end of a paintbrush or a pencil to help push this in there if you need to. And I'm just going to stuff these and then I will hot glue the open edge together. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to say welcome and thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you like my content and will consider subscribing. To my returning viewers, I'd like to say welcome back and thank you so much for your support. I greatly appreciate it. I want to make some little rosettes. So I'm just cutting that same pink fabric into about uh, half inch strips. You just snip it and then rip it down the whole length of the fabric. And now using a hole punch, this is a one inch hole punch, and I'm making circles out of cardstock as a base for my rosettes. So you just start with a dab of hot glue in the middle and take your fabric and attach it. And then using a twisting motion, you just wrap this around, periodically gluing it to the little disc of cardstock. And you can actually uh, make these right on the piece that you're going to attach them to. But this is my first time making them, so I was not confident in doing that. So I put them on the cardstock first and then attached them to the pillow. That way um, I didn't want to risk doing it for the first time on the actual pillow. So it's just twisting gluing it down, keep twisting until you get to that outer edge and then you can uh, cut it off and just put the last little bit down with another dot of hot glue and it looks like a little mini rose. Here's how they turned out. So cute. 
Now I'm adding all my embellishments to my pillows. I have these little handmade paper buttons that I made and at some point I will uh, do a tutorial, I guess, of those. I actually took some video of it, but I have not managed to share that yet. Um, so I'm adding a couple of the buttons and then a rosette and then my finger bow, which I'm going to show you in real time. It'll, it takes about two minutes. But just in case you don't know how to make those, I wanted to share that with you. But if you do know how to make them, you might just want to go ahead and fast forward through that part. And here's how this one looks. And so now we're going to go on to my version of a finger bow tutorial. You want a fairly long piece of twine to do this. This is going to be your tail, so however long you think you want that to be, that's what you leave hanging down. Using your first two fingers, spreading them apart for how big you want the bow, you just wrap this around. I'm going to go three times. Now you take the end of your twine put it down between your fingers it goes completely underneath the back part of your twine so here you have this loop now you're going to stick the end of the twine through the loop And then you just pull it and then you can kind of rock it back and forth to get it tight. Remove it from your fingers your little finger bow and then you just cut this end and that's it for my next set of hearts I wanted to use air dry clay so I'm rolling it out I have some, a couple of cookie cutters I'm going to use and I rolled it out a little bit too thin. I'm showing you the thickness there. It's probably maybe an eighth of an inch. It should be a little bit thicker than that. Um, but anyway, this one is like a fluted edge heart. And now I'm trying to smooth down the edges with a clay tool dipped in water. But I just found that it's just easier for me to pick that up and dip my fingers in the water and smooth it out that way. Then I needed a hole in the top because I want to attach a hanger. So I used the end of my paintbrush to kind of punch a hole down in there. And um, I kind of had to go back and forth. It wasn't making a really clean hole there. So I used a couple different tools. Um, anyway, I, I've seen people use a straw. Maybe that works better than what I was doing. So now I'm rolling out again for this other heart that's just a very clean shaped heart. And again I want to smooth the edges down and then put a hole in the top center. The next step is making some impressions with these stamps that I have. So I just mounted them to my acrylic block and then gently pressed down onto the clay trying not to go deep enough that it would create like an edge around the stamp. However, some of them did not go deep enough to get a full impression. So I guess it's just something I need to practice.
And then I realized that I forgot the hole in this one, so I had to go in and do that. Once they were dry, they all got a coat of acrylic white paint. When the paint was dry, I took my antiquing wax and brushed it into those impressions that I had made into the clay and then wiped off the excess with a rag. Then I used a baby wipe to clean up more of that excess wax. I also added the antiquing wax around the edges of the hearts and over the entire uh, front section as well, but wiping off more around the edges of the impressions so that the darkness was more on the impression itself. I hope that makes sense. Um, I just didn't want to have just dark in the middle and pure white, so I kind of covered the whole thing but just not as dark as the metal section. Now I want to paint some beads to make a hanger. So I'm putting white acrylic paint into a small baggie, adding my little beads and just smushing them around to get the paint onto them. And then I dump them out into a tray so that I can kind of roll them around and get some of that paint off of there. And then when they're half dry, I take my uh, baby wipe and just kind of brush off the excess. I want it to have just kind of a dry brush look onto these beads. And then with some more beads, I add some antiquing wax to a cup, put the beads in there, mix them around, get them all coated, and then I remove the excess with the baby wipe. For the hanger that I'm going to put the beads on, I'm just taking a piece of jute twine, folding it in half, threading it through, and then going through the loop and tightening it up at the center of the heart. And now I can add my beads. I'm going white, stained, white, stained, and white. Then I tie a knot down on that top bead to hold them in place. And then I can leave a little bit of a space open and make another knot so that there's a hanger. Then I just repeat the same process for the remaining two hearts. My next set of hearts are these three wooden heart cutouts and this book from the thrift store that are Tales from Shakespeare. Oh my gosh, this is so wonderful. It's, the pages are yellowed. They're just classic Shakespeare. Oh, perfect for this project. So I ripped out the pages that I wanted and I'm gonna decoupage these onto these little wooden hearts. I brush on my Mod Podge and then lay the paper down over it, smoothing it out, and then just trim off the excess. And once this is dry, I can go around the edges with sandpaper to trim off the excess that's still on there. I repeat this process for the two remaining hearts.
I lightly sanded the front part with a fine grit sandpaper just to kind of add a little more wear and tear and aging to them. Then I did a final coat of Mod Podge on the entire top of the heart and around the edges. Now I'm going to just whitewash on the front with my gesso. So I just put some in a cup and add some water to it. And then I will be able to just brush that on and it'll create kind of a haze over the print of the um, book page. I blot off the excess with a cloth and then set it aside to dry. Then I finished off the backs of the hearts by brushing on and wiping off the antiquing wax. The next step is to add some creepy cloth onto the tops of these and then a layer of cheesecloth. So I'm going to use my tacky glue to um, apply to attach these and it's such a big open weave that um, it was hard to know like where to put the glue. I didn't know if I should just put it all over or just around the edges. But I concentrated mostly on the edges to make sure that that's where it was going to stick the best because the cheesecloth would be over the top of this so that there would be an extra layer there for the glue to adhere to. Then I cut my cheesecloth to the approximate size that I wanted and applied a little more tacky glue on top of the creepy cloth and then applied the cheesecloth. And um, I will be going around and trimming all that up so it's not going to look like quite the mess that it is right now. So here's where I am trimming it all up. And as you can see, I'm cutting and then I'm pulling on all these edges. I want a nice frayed look, but I don't want it sticking out too far from the edge of the heart. Um, I don't want it to look, you know, like super fuzzy. Just trying to thin it out a little bit. And I just keep working with it until I get the look that I want. Now I have cut from scrapbook paper a heart and kind of a little flower shape. And I'm just going to use my um, tacky glue to go ahead and put these on. I want to put the flower underneath the heart with it just kind of peeking out around the edges. So it's a bit of a challenge to get these both sticky with glue and then stuck down in just the right spot. But I got it close enough. I want to finish off the edge of the scrapbook paper heart so I'm taking some jute twine and hot glue and just wrapping that around the edge of it. When I get back to where I started I go ahead and cut off the excess twine and just add a little dot of hot glue to glue down that final little piece and here's how it looks so far. Now I'm adding a paper rose with a little bit of hot glue. I stamped some words onto a coffee stained coffee filter in Timber Brown Stays on Ink and then tore around the edges and I am applying them with my glue stick. I did a little final trimming around the edges to just make sure it was the way I wanted it. And that was it for this one.
Now I'm just repeating the process on the remaining hearts, kind of uh, putting, you know, putting the rows in a different spot, putting the words in a different spot, and then I get those all trimmed up as well. The last thing I wanted to add to these are some little rag balls. So I'm using that really light pink fabric again, cut into about one inch strips, and I'm using these 2.9 inch styrofoam balls. I start with adding a dot of hot glue at the top in the center, and then I just wrap that piece of fabric around and then trim off the excess. So then I can, it'll be easier to work with to hot glue this piece of fabric around the ball. For the next piece, I'm going to start it up at the center again, but it's just slightly overlapping to the right, and then as you wrap it around, it will come up onto the other side of that original strip. So I just keep adding the hot glue as I'm wrapping this around, and I hope it makes sense what I'm saying. Like how it comes up on the other side if you're looking at the ball and you wrap it on the right hand side if you're going around the circumference the same way you did with the first piece it will automatically come up over the opposite side of that original piece um, I don't know if it's if if I'm being clear but anyway, I just continue that process, wrapping all the way around and gluing it down, and then the whole ball is covered. And I wanted to add some little pieces of lace around this, but I didn't want to completely cover like I did with the pink fabric. So I am going to just do this in um, thirds. I'm going to go around the center hot gluing that down, trimming it off, and then my next piece will be, I will skip a space instead of um, overlapping, I will skip a space and start gluing it, leaving some of the pink fabric exposed. Hopefully you can see here a little better how I'm wrapping this, how there's a space in between. Uh, there's not much contrast between the fabric and the lace. So on camera, it just doesn't really pick it up that well. But here it is all done. Now for this one, I wanted to use some twine to wrap around in sections, similar to how I did the lace. So I'm starting with a dot of hot glue at the top to start my twine, and then periodically using it down the sides and wrapping this all the way around. Then I wrapped that around two more times and secured it with hot glue. Then I just started on the next section, which I actually did a little too close to the first one, so I ended up doing more sections than I had intended to. So to me, it kind of looks like a pumpkin when it's done. <laughs> but, oh, well, they, you know, sometimes our vision and our reality just don't match up.
I ended up leaving the third one just with the pink fabric wrapped around it, but here's how this one turned out. And now on to our bowl that I got from the thrift store. I cleaned it up, removed all the stickers and the felt pads on the bottom. I gave it a good coat of Rust-Oleum's Espresso Spray Paint, and then I did three coats of chalk paint in cottage white. After those were dry, I did a stippling effect with the chalk paint to add some texture and kind of smooth out those brush lines. Now because I had done so many coats and I let it dry very thoroughly, there was no way I could wet distress this. I had to go in with some 80 grit sandpaper and really work to get this thing distressed up. Then I sealed it with a matte finish sealer. I thought, oh, I'll just spray this on here and then brush it instead of pouring it into a cup and brushing it directly. But that got everywhere. So when I did the other, the inside of the bowl, I just poured it into a cup and brushed it on. I had that stuff all over my table. It was quite the mess. Once this was all dry, I did go back and put um, some new felt pads on the bottom of the bowl. I did not get footage of that. But this is it. It's all done. So here's all my little bowl fillers. And now we're going to put them in the bowl and see how it looks. Well, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed watching and got inspired to go create something. See you next time.